To use this magic, I must invite the dark forces within me. The temptation to submit to the darkness will be great. There are many reasons someone with talent for magic goes searching for power. To crush their enemies, to sate their curiosity, or to protect those they love. But with any power, there are consequences to venturing too far in a journey for power. And this is no difference for the case of elder magic, where it can lead to a point of no return. We learn in Canis' support with Pent that all three of his brothers had entered into a state of limbo because they ventured too deeply into the dark arts. The support conversation states, Oh no, they are alive, but barely. They merely subsist. As you know, Elder Magic is based on the force of darkness. It is even more powerful than nature magic, which is often called anima. But to use this magic, you must invite the dark forces within you. The temptation to submit to darkness is great. Unfortunately, the darkness took my brothers. They live and breathe, their eyes open and close, but they do not move and they do not speak. Canis even alludes to this in one of his quotes in FVH, the darkness took my brothers. But for Canis, he ventures deeper into the dark arts because of his curiosity. The darkness took my brothers. There could be a reason why Canis isn't swept away by the temptations of dark magic unlike his brothers because he's not venturing to gain power, but rather to gain knowledge. Canis is known as a curious man, always searching for answers in whichever he finds curious, and will use his knowledge to befriend people, such as characters like Nino, who he teaches how to read. But there's another man in the Lieb universe that's the complete opposite of Canis. Though he doesn't enter the state of limbo like Canis' brothers, he does lose himself to the temptation of power. And that man is the main antagonist of FE7, Nurgle. If the player is patient enough to level up Nils to level 7 in Lin's story mode, you can unlock chapter 19xx, a guiding chapter called A Glimpse in Time. In this chapter, we meet a druid called Theodore, who tells them about how elder magic is casted. Yes, it's the fate of those who study dark magic. If you covet the dark, you must enter it of your own free will. You must erase yourself and become an empty vessel. Only then will you be able to receive the dark and master it. If your disposition is weak, the dark will overwhelm you. You will be lost. Oftentimes you will forget why you seek power to begin with. Only a few people ever gain true power. To win such a prize, oneself is a small and insignificant sacrifice. He also explains that the greatest dark magic user to exist in Alib erased his own identity, all emotion, and gave himself completely to the dark in order to defeat the dragons during the war between man and dragon, the Scourging. And once you defeat Theodore, he says this is exactly what he meant if only he had given himself up more to the darkness. But what's interesting about this chapter is actually at the very start and at the very end. In the beginning, we see Ninian running off by herself with Elwood and company following her closely. Once getting to the ruins, we're treated to a flashback in which we see a man dressed in shaman's clothing telling his two children to wait here until he returns. The robed man explains that bad men had captured mommy and that he must go and save her. The two children plead for their daddy not to leave, but alas, the robed man leaves in pursuit of those that had taken away his wife. And at the very end of the chapter, we see Nurgle, the main antagonist of FE7, teleport into the ruins and saying, What is this place? I was supposed to be at the dragon's gate. Why am I here? Ah, now I remember. I was here a long, long time ago, during the scourging. I studied dark magic here. This. I left something here. Something valuable. Ugh, my head. The pain. Bah! It must not be worth much if I never bother returning for it. I have power now. Nothing else matters. I'll open the dragon's gate and get even more power. The power to defeat anyone. Power. And after saying his monologue, he would teleport out. Nurgle teleporting in at the end and talking about how he thinks he forgot something alludes to the robed man at the start of the chapter being a younger Nurgle who had gone searching for his wife. Upon failing to save her, Nurgle resorts to studying dark magic to gain power and protect those he loved. But while submitting himself to the Elder Magic, he loses himself to the Dark Forces, and Nurgle would never be the same. And like Theodore had explained, Nurgle would forget the reason why he even started to seek power in the first place. This is why Nurgle appears as a green ally unit opposed to the standard red enemy unit we see him as normally throughout the game. 
Ninian running to the ruins and telling the Lycian nobles that she remembers this place alludes to the young girl being Ninian and the young boy being her sibling Nils. Ninian also seems to know her way around those ruins, almost going instantly to the library of books that Nurgle had kept while studying the Elder Magic Forces. And because you completed this chapter, you are then also greeted to a different death quote from Nurgle, where he would cry out for Aenor, his wife, but ultimately we learned that his mind had been completely given up to the Elder Magic Forces, leaving him yelling, telling the Lysian nobles to tremble and despair, his original death quote. Nils is also seen crying here, but he just doesn't know why, meaning it's been a very long time since Nurgle had left his kids behind. And upon completing the game, instead of the malicious smile of Zephyl in the fin screen, we are treated to a picture that Ninian was staring at in Chapter 19XX, a human and dragon holding hands. Thanks for watching.